Greetings everybody. We're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator and a program called True Colors that uses the MBTI as a resource for personality typing and its relationship to leadership. Usually this is a very fun uh, lecture that we do in class. We have a few laughs as we do it. Um, but unfortunately this year we're going to do it virtually, so I hope it's still an enjoyable experience for you and it is certainly one of my favorites. Myers-Briggs is a pretty common and easily available model for personality type assessment. We could have a bunch of conversations about what that means, but there's often a desire to describe people in particular categories of personality or by certain categories of personal traits. The first time I ever uh, came across Myers-Briggs was when I was in high school. My high school cathedral girls here in Hamilton proudly um, completed the Myers-Briggs on all their students in order to suggest what area of work or what career a student should have. And mine came back that I should be a sociologist. And I remember thinking, well, that was pretty much impossible because there was no job called sociologist. And uh, as somebody who came from a pretty working class family, I needed to make sure that I had a, a job. <laughs> and so maybe that's why I ended up in social work and not in sociology. I next came across the Myers-Briggs Brig style evaluation under a, a model called True Colors when I moved to Nova Scotia and was doing some research for the Nova Scotia Government and General Employees Union. Um, while I was doing that research, uh, I was traveling across the province completing focus groups with workers in income support, uh, social assistance, employment supports, and child protection in order to find out a little bit about how they were experiencing policy change that had been implemented in the province when a new government came into power. The Ham government, named not for the luxurious uh, holiday feasting meat that we sometimes enjoy, but rather for the premier of the province at the time, had introduced a lot of changes, something they were describing as putting the social in social assistance. When I met with the 111 so social workers that I did meet with across the province, they talked about this concept of the social in social assistance as having been something that they found quite confusing. When they first heard that the provincial government wanted to put the social back in social assistance, they immediately thought about relationship, about spending time with the people they worked with, seeing clients in their homes, getting to know their stories better. But what they actually discovered the government meant was more surveillance through things like standardized paperwork and standardized reporting by clients into the office. And these workers had more than 200, many of them had more than 200 files each. And so the idea that they were supposed to keep track of 200 individuals in the course of a year seemed impossible to them. So when we relate the social workers' stories uh, through the caseload overload ready to explode report, we talked to social workers about a bunch of different themes. But one of the themes that came up was the response of the government to things like poor worker morale and workers experiencing a lot of burnout and trauma in the workplace, which they saw as a direct result uh, of the policy changes that had been implemented. One of the ways government tried to combat the dissatisfaction and low morale in the workers was to implement something called change management training. And we've talked about that a little bit in previous classes. The government chose to implement true colors change management trainings. And the workers were pretty unhappy with the end result of that training. They generally tended to describe it as, what color is your bullshit? Maybe about a year after I completed this research project, I was working at a community college and I had my own uh, True Colors training. Not a change management training, but just a general sort of teens training. My boss at the time came from retail sales, even though she was the director of the Health and Human Service program, 
and she had an MBA. She really believed in this kind of HR uh, personality testing as fundamental to being able to organize teams. And it also seemed pretty clear to me that there were two preferred personality types. And those were, at the time, red, but it seems red has now become orange, and gold. Red is the extrovert innovator, and gold is the structured loving planner. So, um, I was neither a red nor a gold. <laughs> and I felt pressured to kind of adopt these other traits, even though they weren't necessarily who I was. The experience that I had with True Colors made me want to know more about it. It seemed like there was a lot of money and a lot of energy being invested in the model, and I wanted to know more about how the model had been developed. So in the course of reading and in exploring more about True Colors, I came across this statement in one of the organizations that provides the trainings material. They clearly state that the problem with teams is people. And so I think that this really illustrates the idea that there is a desire to find out what kind of person you are so that you can be reshaped in a way that is seen as ideal by, say, your HR manager. Honecker, one of the people who's written about True Colors, says that the model can be used for aptitude assessments, so defining what kind of work you should be doing, like what happened at my high school, personality assessments, career progression assessments, and change responses. So a bunch of different areas of work and employment um, that can certainly affect our experiences on the job. It's important to remember that Myers-Briggs was originally developed as an assessment of normal personality, not for use in any kind of diagnoses. It's supposed to describe people and perhaps put people into groups with similar people. It's also based on Jungian uh, psychology, which is perhaps one of the more um, esoteric kinds of psychological theory. So it's an interesting way of thinking about personality. We also know, and if you listen to the, to the podcast, you know in great detail, that Myers-Briggs was not developed on the basis of any empirical evidence. It has very low validity. And so we might want to ask some questions about what happens when we take a model like this, use it to, and adapt it into another model like True Colors, and then use it as leaders in places of employment. Myers-Briggs relies pretty heavily on binaries, and to some degree, the idea that binaries are either ends of a continuum. So it talks about the idea that we're introverted or extroverted, judges or perceivers, people who rely on sense, like feelings, like tactile, like um, input from the seven senses, or intuition, so gut feeling, internal processes, or thoughts versus feelings. So as I mentioned before, it was pretty clear to me in my own experience of the training that there were some ideal models. I've included both the um, orange, which used to be red, card, and the gold card to just give you a bit of a sense of what's included within those. And you can always stop the lecture if you want to look at them in more detail. There are... One of the critiques of these kinds of models is the idea that they get applied within human resource contexts as very fixed processes that are stable from situation to situation. But in fact, scholars suggest that Myers-Briggs is really reflective of context. The questions that are asked are all asked about what you would do in a particular context. And so if we use an assumption that personal personality traits are stable and fixed, so that you're either introverted or extroverted, and that your response is coming from that trait, then we would understand, for example, our friend Ali as someone who is quiet. In contrast, if we think about personality traits as something that are continuous and also rooted in context, then we know that in certain contexts we may be more or less introverted or extroverted. So we might have a friend who is quiet at work, so Ali's quiet at work, but when she's hanging out with her sisters, she's very extroverted and boisterous. So it's not necessarily a matter of this fixed, stable set of behaviors, but rather figuring out what contexts allow people to show more of themselves or to behave in a particular way.
Another thing that I learned about Myers-Briggs in my process of considering some of the research was the idea that oftentimes human resources departments or contexts apply the um, findings from Myers-Briggs as though it was scientific evidence. And we know that the way that the measurement was developed is not based in anything that we would describe as empirical. The traits reflected in, through, or in the um, personality types are about a kind of midpoint of people's responses. So there's a lot of different changes and uh, possible mm, problems with both the reliability and the validity of the measurement. So again, as leaders, I think we have to really challenge the application and use of this, knowing that it doesn't hold much weight. Honecker's work is the only work that I could find that conducts research into the True Colors model, and this paper was never actually published. In Honecker's work, there's a lot of contradictions. He states that the meanings assigned for the approach are stable, and based on the understanding of Myers-Briggs, we know that that's not true. Honecker also claims that gender doesn't affect scores, but if you actually look at the data he presents, it suggests that gender does have an effect on scores. So the way in which he's analyzing and presenting his study findings is pretty dubious and it's one of the only pieces of material that I could find. So I don't know, leaders, I think maybe we'd have to question this quite deeply if we were gonna apply true colors as anything more than a kind of fun activity. Techniques are becoming more commonplace as this New York Times article suggests. Myers-Briggs and true colors still get used in workplaces and they can shape people's um, understandings of collaboration they can shape the work that is assigned to particular people, and they can also either encourage or discourage individuality as a positive element of the workplace. The research into these kinds of models suggests that we ought to be cautious if we do that, and that sometimes when we encourage people to think about themselves as having a particular personality type, that it can bring out the worst of that personality type, making people operate kind of in the extremes of who they think they're supposed to be. And this can have a negative effect for the workplace. Post-structural scholars would suggest that personality is socially constructed and that we learn what is acceptable and desirable. So there's some research that suggests that equity and inclusion goals can be negatively affected by the use of things like true colors and Myers-Briggs type indicators. Because they encourage the acceptance of particular kinds of personalities and don't think critically about how people develop personalities and how we learn how to be who we are and what's desirable and normalized at home, in the community, and in the workplace. So I'll just end with a little story from last year. One of the students in 742 last year told me that where he, in the sector he worked, he was required to take Myers-Briggs type tests every time he applied for a new job. And that he and some of his friends had studied the questions related to extroversion and being assertive and had memorized the answers that would produce the extroverted outcome. So they had figured out how to beat the test in order to seem like a more suitable candidate when they were evaluated by HR. So I guess that's another thing to think about when we think about applying these kinds of models. And as social work leaders, we might want to challenge their use in our institutions and organizations. I'll look forward to reading and hearing your uh, Flipgrid uh, posts and to chatting more about this when we meet.